Hello and welcome to Arcanine Rides. In this video, I'm going to cover everything related to shooting electric scooter ride footage on GoPro, including the settings I use, my most used accessories, and tips I have for capturing high quality ride footage. Be sure to check out the timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a certain topic. Let's start by looking at the GoPros that I use. So I currently have two GoPros. This one is the GoPro Hero 8 Black, and this one is the GoPro Hero 9 Black. They're fundamentally the same GoPro. The 9 has a little bit more battery life and a couple extra options. I actually find myself using the 8 more because it's a little bit lighter and I don't need the extra battery capacity. But I do have two so that I can use one for the chest cam and the other for maybe a helmet cam or to mount directly on a bike or something like that. Being able to have multiple angles with two GoPros has been really nice. So that is why I have both of these. As you can see, the 8 has taken a bit of a beating. This is from my really big crash on the Titan and this guy has not been in a serious crash yet but this one works perfectly fine you can't even see the scratches on the lens at all if you're looking to buy a gopro on a budget then you should definitely just go with the 8 because the 9 and even the 10 i don't think offer enough unless you're wanting to shoot in 4k at a really high frame rate and speaking of resolution and frame rate let's go over my gopro settings for day and night riding Let's start with my standard daytime riding settings. These are settings that I currently use after about two years of experimenting and testing. I almost always record at 2.7K 60fps. 2.7K is 1440p resolution. The reason I record in 1440p instead of 4K is because neither the Hero 8 nor the Hero 9 can record in 4K 60fps and I'd rather have the higher frame rate than the better resolution. The Hero 10 can record in 4K at higher frame rates, so go with that if you have the newest GoPro. The lens always stays in super view. This is a must for capturing scooter footage, otherwise the camera feels really zoomed in. I've accidentally recorded in wide instead of super view before, and the footage makes me nauseous. Hypersmooth is the built-in camera stabilization, and this setting is super important if you want smooth footage. This setting always stays on. These next five settings I leave untouched. Just double check that they're set to the defaults you see here. For the highest quality footage, make sure that the bitrate is set to high. High speed GoPro footage will always have a bit of graininess to it, but a high bitrate can minimize this. Also, if you're publishing your footage, make sure you export at the highest bitrate your editor will allow to make sure the footage looks as crisp as possible. For day writing, I leave the shutter and white balance on auto. I usually have EV comp on zero, but if you're riding on a particularly cloudy day, you could bump it up a bit to make your shot brighter. The ISO minimum should be on 100, and be sure to bump down your ISO maximum to 800 to avoid super bright washed out shots on sunny days. I like the sharpness at medium as it's a good balance of picking up far off details without them looking too grainy or blurry. When I'm feeling lazy, I set the color to GoPro, but if I want to have more control over the coloring of ride footage, I set it to flat and color the footage in my editor after. GoPro color is very vivid, which is great for most riding settings, and produces really good looking footage most of the time. You can see in this footage, however, that the colors are almost too vivid and it makes the scenery almost look unreal. I should have shot in flat here and colored it in post. Raw audio is something that I haven't really tried, but I will look into using more in the future to have control over the audio I record on rides and hopefully make it sound a little clearer and easier to understand. You should use this setting if you want to edit your audio in a program after you ride. The wind setting just filters out wind noise. I usually just keep it on auto, but if you know you're going on a super windy ride, you could set this to on. To avoid another long explanation of my night riding settings, I'll put the night riding settings that I use up on the screen right now. You can pause if you'd like to see them. The big difference between these settings and the daytime settings that I use is that for night settings, I record in 4K, 24 frames per second with a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second. 
I found this tip online when looking up good night settings and it's worked really well for me. Generally though, GoPros capture night footage really poorly so don't expect too much. Let's look now at all the accessories I use with my GoPros. I'll also cover any tips or tricks I have for recording using those accessories. The first accessory, and a must have in my opinion, is the GoPro chesty mount. All the first person ride footage that you see on this channel is recorded using this accessory. For best results with the chesty mount, you want to make sure that the straps are adjusted correctly. You want the shoulder straps to be as extended as possible to allow the mount to sit low on your chest. This makes for a better recording angle if you are wanting to capture both the scenery and your scooter handlebars. The chest strap should be as tight as possible but still comfortable in order to prevent the GoPro from moving around. The angle of the GoPro is another important factor for capturing the right balance of scenery and handlebar. You want the handlebars to sit in the lower part of the shot, visible but not the focus. To do this, start your camera mounted at a 90 degree angle and then tilt it forward just slightly. You might need to angle it down a bit more for scooters with lower handlebars, but do not tilt it too far down. Experiment with it a bit and you'll get the perfect shot. So this right here is a tube mount and it's basically designed to go on handlebars. And that's basically all I use it for. You can mount it on handlebars and then you attach the GoPro and you can get a good forward view um, on the scooter if you don't want any clutter in your footage like if you don't want to see the handlebars or anything like that i don't use this one as much but you can get an idea of how it works there these adhesive mounts are amazing for mounting on helmets and i've also used them to mount directly onto scooters to get the rear tire view that you see in some of my videos and you would be surprised how crazy sticky these things are and one of these packs comes with a bunch of them this is actually my second pack but this adhesive that it comes with is amazing and works super super well and i've had no issues with them like coming loose at all even with the amount of times that i've accidentally like kicked them with the back of my foot like they don't move or come off at all. Definitely pick up a set of these if you plan to be mounting your GoPro to your helmet or to your scooter in any fashion. The last accessories I want to touch on aren't directly related to capturing footage, but are still important. You can make sure that you have enough battery for those longer rides by picking up an extra battery pack as well as a charging bay to make charging both batteries at the same time easy. The Hero 8 battery bay I got is super nice for not only charging, but also carrying the batteries in a bag or case. The batteries do not slide out on their own and both can be kept together neatly and compactly. This is an official GoPro accessory, so it's a little more pricey than the Hero 9 charging bay I got off of Amazon for a third of the price. It's not as high quality and it doesn't carry the battery like the Hero 8 charging pack does. You can decide which route you would like to go down. A good carrying case is also really nice to have to keep your GoPros and most of your accessories together in one place. I personally do not like the design of the one I have because there are no dividers, so everything just gets scrambled together in one compartment and it isn't much better than just stuffing everything loose into a backpack. It would definitely be worth it to invest in a nice carrying case if you're going to be traveling around with your GoPros a lot. There are a plethora of other GoPro accessories out there, including a few others that I occasionally use, like a GoPro selfie stick and a few different tripods. You can check out all the accessories available and determine for yourself what you want, but the ones specifically mentioned in this video are the most important accessories to start with in my opinion. And that's all the info and tips I have for you. Hopefully this guide helps you get started or gives you some extra tips for recording your own electric scooter footage with GoPros. Links to the GoPros and all the accessories I mentioned in this video will be down in the description. Leave a like if this was a helpful or enjoyable video, comment any questions or comments you have, and subscribe for more electric scooter content. I'll see you in the next video.